and so. In the stillness, in the silence of being, just simply being here now. We open to openness, to the purity and the finer frequencies of remembrance of the great glorious light that we are, that we are so much more than what we believe ourselves to be in the mindscape, in the bodyscape, that in the vast, open, infinite landscape of consciousness, we discover the profound truth. That there is nothing to believe and nothing to understand. That what is spoken and shared is a resonance. And it is just about a natural attunement where the resonance recognizes itself. We could say that truth is truth is truth, that truth proves itself. It does not require any learning, any information. It is the naturalness and the simplicity of the realization of what we are beyond the mind and the body, beyond the story and the roles. That we have the capacity within our functioning to remember the purity and the love, the light that we are in truth. And when this kind of sharing happens, the mind conceptualizes, the mind, we could say, humanizes the, the words and makes a concept of an experience, imagining an, a me. When in truth, the remembrance of what we are is the remembrance of the unbounded light, a frequency so far beyond before and finer than the density of body, mind, and story. That we are intelligence, light, crystalline light spiraling within itself, flowing within itself. And when this light seemingly embodies the consciousness, imagines that it is stuck at the singular point, but the truth is that the consciousness is always free. It is really just to notice that there is an impetus within the human life, within the life experience, to we could say, know the meaning of life, to discover something more than the mundanity of a human life experience, that there's a, a knowing somehow of something greater, a greater possibility, something more profound. And that there have been certain experiences and resonances throughout the life that have acted as clues. Shimmering seeings, holographic rememberings, noticings. That if paid attention to, these moments of openness are the frequency of remembrance. It is just that we have been habituated to keep focused upon the mind and the mental activity and the story. 
and to distract away from all that has been inviting us to remember. But at some point in the life, there is a maturing in the consciousness, a readiness. There is a a distilling of the frequencies and a natural pull to break orbit out of the sense of limitation. And the way that this plays is by creating situations in the life that often push us, push us against seeming edges to recognize that when pushed against an edge, that we fall right through the whole appearance of life and discover that there is nothing containing us, nothing limiting us. And yet sometime, often this breaking orbit can feel like a bumpy ride. So much a part of this natural unraveling is that we don't choose this moment of revelation. We don't choose to break orbit. It's that consciousness itself is ready to break orbit out of the sense of the personal and the limitation and the story. And within the sense of the personal, there can often be a feeling of bumpiness, of life feeling disturbed in some way. Because we don't remember within the comfort zone of limitation. We don't remember within protection that the remembrance itself is a collapse of the layers of conditioning and protection and a remembrance of being unbounded and unlimited and not held in any way contained by the story by any kind of challenges or intensity in the life. That in fact, all that is happening on the surface of life is just an opportunity, a graced opportunity. But often the graced opportunity will mean that we go through the bumpiness of being cracked open. But there is such a potency in being cracked open if we can be willing, courageous and open to receive the grace of being recalibrated, of being offered something so much more profound that when we follow the mind's ideas and we get tangled more into the story, trying to make a better me, trying to improve the me, we, we get distracted away from the incredible grace. Let's say a fully engaged life is a life that is fully engaged in absolute receiving of all that is happening, but is not trying to fix or change the sense of the me into a better me, but hands the me over to the flow of life so that the engagement in life can be so full as life itself. This is not shying away from life. This is not hiding from life. This is an invitation to face life so fully, so openly, so naturally as life itself in order to dissolve the protections and plays of limitation. And this happens through the full living of life, a fully experienced, engaged life. The invitation of it all is to recognize that you are not the person, the limited point that the mind imagines to be all there is. And when this focus of limitation is freed, in the perspective of being consciousness, 
there is a possibility of life being a, a refinement process, which is allowing a refinement into subtler and subtler frequencies of being, where we are not bound by any kind of density. We're not bound by the denser frequencies of mind, body. We're not trying to ground anymore, right? This whole idea, spiritual idea of trying to ground. We're trying to actually take off completely. <laughs> we're, we're actually wanting to come to a familiarity with being ungrounded, that the only ground is in presence, that we're not trying to ground and weigh ourselves down with more stuff, more ideas, more strategies, more techniques. We're actually wanting to come to a familiar naturalness of being utterly ungrounded and empty. Can feel discombobulating to start with, to feel unbounded. And the habit to want to tether again to the earth, to the story, to the matter. But the invitation is to be untethered, to come to a familiarity as we open to recognize the substance of what we are is an emptiness and yet a fullness, a fullness of intelligence, that we're made of intelligence, we're made of hmm, light, resonant light, crystalline light, spiraling within itself. And the light that we are made of never leaves the great light. It never actually embodies and separates and divides. And really the invitation of the, of the human life is the possibility to see through. Mm. It's like being dropped off in a, in a maze <laughs> and having seemingly no instructions and trying to find your way out of the maze. The grace is that we actually are fully equipped. But we have to come to the maturity to recognize that all of our equipment is internal. That the we are not equipped. Huh, we could say we're not equipped for the human life because we're not supposed to get stuck and bound within the human experience. The possibility is to find our way out of the maze of the mind and the denser frequencies and to open to the finer frequencies and remember the light, the love, the glory of what we are, the purity, the divinity of, of what we are. And the knowing of this is within us. So as these words come, it's not to believe anything or to understand anything, or to learn anything. It is just to resonate where there is recognition. We're shedding, not gathering, right? We're shedding the ideas. We're shedding in order to come to the remembrance of emptiness. Because in the emptiness, in the silence, in the stillness of being is the fine frequencies of remembrance. That remembrance does not happen in the noise. Remembrance happens in the stop. There are a gazillion ways to remember, but the remembrance is the same because it is the dropping out of the maze of life and into the infinite 
expanse of the timeless. It's a remembrance of intelligence, a remembrance of the light that we are in truth. And when we open to the intelligence of remembrance, we do not need the information that we have gathered because everything that is required is right here, right here in the presence of now. It is to take flight, break orbit, let go. It is to get freed from the gravity. Because the true essence nature is of be, being unbounded, of being everywhere, of the remembrance of the core substance of what we are that remembers its absolute oneness with all that is. And it is this remembrance of being one with all that is that allows us to live in an integrated way, we could say, because in the integration, the, the life is lived as life itself, constantly rebalancing and harmonizing itself in the process of refinement in order to bring this aligned remembrance. There are so many threads within the human life experience that can keep us bound and tangled. The ideas and concepts and giving value to what has been learned and conditioned in the program. The emotional body where the sense of lack, something missing, is such a huge pull, where anger, where lust and greed keep calling us back into the rhythms of containment and where our learned habit to not fully process and feel but to store certain patterns in limited ways means that life is not able to flow fully, freely. So the whole play of refinement and opening is one of freeing the patterns of limitation, giving freedom to what has been held in obscuration and grooves of limitation. And so as these chunks <laughs> of holding patterns are freed, they bring forward certain feelings and happenings. Sometimes it is just about feeling what is, what is arising, but oftentimes it will need to play itself out on the surface to truly get our attention because we have been conditioned to not give our attention to the inner world and the feelings. We have learned to distract. And when we distract, it means that the intelligence will create a, an appearance, a situation in order to reflect, humble, and really bring awareness and light to the patterns of limitation as they are freeing. So whatever is happening on the surface of life is always offering the possibility of freedom. There's nothing else really happening. Of course, to the mind, it seems like my life, my happenings, and there can be such an involvement in the story and the grooves of wanting to fit in, to be seen, to enjoy, to, 
to, to play life out according to the me. But the truth is that true enjoyment doesn't really happen when we are bound, because that kind of enjoyment is a sense of pleasure, which is always the opposite of pain. It's a play of opposites. And as long as the play of opposites is in operation, that which we are wanting to avoid will be just right around the corner. And we live in fear of when that might appear, when we might get hit by the next moment of disappointment. And if we are constantly trying to stay attached to pleasure, it also means that we're not fully receiving when the fullness of life is living itself happens. And it means that we judge and we try to distract away from some of the maybe seemingly more challenging happenings of, of life. And we try to shy away from feeling the feelings that are trying to surface and release us in truth from the patterns of limitation. So such a huge part of this unfolding is coming to the natural open ability to be able to receive everything equally. Where we're not constantly judging and having opinions and where we're not imagining that something wrong is happening when emotions are arising, that we don't make anger wrong. We don't make sadness, grief, anxiety, stress. We don't make any of this wrong. We don't make fear wrong that we allow the surfacing of whatever is happening into the presence of love, into the presence of being, that we allow whatever is trying to surface and we receive the wisdom so that life can truly flow because life is trying to free itself, is trying to chip off and untangle the patterns of limitation and it will do whatever it needs in order to make that happen. It will do whatever is needed for itself because the love of love is so great that whatever it takes is what will happen. We can, within the unfolding, we can find a hiding place, solace, within the abstract. But the truth is that the abstract of the absolute, of the silence, the stillness, the remembrance, is the sanctuary. It is the guiding light, the shining light. But the truth is that there is an absolute wholeness that includes everything. And our work is not completed until there is an absolute integration of a fully engaged life where the spirituality and the sense of the absolute is not in any way divided from the full living of life on the surface. Because this is how the true transmutation happens. And perhaps more importantly, it is how divinity gets to the surface of life. So the wholeness, the oneness has to be remembered and lived. And the process of refinement is exactly that. This is why coming to the transcendent and opening to a sense of expansion and freedom can feel so very beautiful. And then it can feel like, well, now why am I feeling sad? Why? Is anger arising? Why am I stressed? It's to check the being that you are, the, the presence is not disturbed ever by what is moving and changing. And in the recognition that the presence of being is undisturbed, it brings the ability to welcome life naturally, openly, that whatever is arising, whatever is surfacing, is fully allowed. Because it, in truth, is just old stress, old patterns of limitation releasing. 
And there is a profound beauty to it all because there is a rebalancing happening, a refinement happening where we are leaving the conditioned patterns of limitation and we are fully in that leaving, releasing. We are coming to remember the true nature and really blossom in the highest possibility that can be lived in the human life. And really the highest possibility is to be lived to live absorbed in the glory of God in remembrance and to be an expression of that glorious remembrance. And in a way, this is true Dharma. When we really come to true Dharma, we can't really come to true Dharma until we are fully immersed in God, if we, if we are honest. We can attempt and we can want to, but Dharma, true Dharma is... Mm, the expression of love on the surface of life we can't fully express love on the surface of life until we are living as that love and so really our focus has to always be remembrance of being that love all the way through and, th and that if we are attempting to try to prematurely live our dharma it will it will always seem to be a little clunky we don't really have to worry about living our dharma or true purpose because in, in a way our dharma, our purpose is to remember the true nature. And, in, and until that's really fully remembered, the dharma cannot, cannot naturally get to the surface of life, which is the unique expression of divinity, of purity, of love on the surface of life. We can have a sense of it. There can be flavors of it. But we want to have such an awareness of where our desire mechanism can come in for that, that can get confused and actually then be a distraction away from us really truly living the possibility of opening to true nature, that we can get distracted upon the way by the desires and ideas that are still tangled in wanting to be seen, wanting to be recognized. So there wants to be such a discernment about, in a way, we could say trying to run before we can walk. Let us walk in love, in purity, in wide openness, and trust and know that the living expression is inevitable, unavoidable, and it will most usually not be what we imagine it to be. But it is effortless and natural. But our focus wants to be aligning with what brings us alive where we can really recognize in the silence, in the stillness, the truth of who we are. And we can flow in creativity and naturalness. Mm. Everything is consciousness. And it is conspiring within the natural flow of intelligence to know itself. The whole human experience is a flow of consciousness in the process, the natural evolutionary process of awakening to its purity. And where we enter that flow of remembrance is the flow of attraction. It's the flow that carries us deeper and deeper into this truth and most often we will find this flow in the stillness in the silence in nature in the stop and really all that is asked of us here is to listen 
to be the open receptivity. To really notice if we are in this space asking for things, filling up the space. That's where even prayer can sometimes be a little, have a little edge to it, right? That true, pe- true prayer is, is being able to listen, to receive the resonance of divinity, to be open enough here that we can hear listen, receive our own purity, that we can receive the fine, fine frequency, that we're not so busy asking for things for the me, that we actually find out what is being offered to us here. Can we receive the fine frequency of our own purity, our own divinity, the love that we are here? That true prayer is to listen so deeply to what we are being offered. In the silence, in the stillness, in a way silence is the true prayer. The stop is the true prayer. But if we have a prayer before that, it might be for the ability to stop for such a deep surrender, such a deep, pure surrender and pure devotion to come in. Because surrender, pure surrender, pure devotion is is the stop. It's an alignment. It's the holy moment here now, perfect presence, silence. An alignment into the timeless, into the naturalness of being, into desirelessness, we could say. Just being here, wanting nothing, being the offering. And in the open receptivity that is the natural awareness the possibility of receiving yourself, receiving the truth of who you are, receiving the glorious remembrance of who you are. Where nothing else is needed, just this. Now, of course, life is going to continue living. But the glory is that silence, stillness, this this holy moment is, is, is always this holy moment. This timeless moment is always here. You're never away from this. Even if there seem to be overlays of life living and a sense of busyness or fullness, a sense of happenings happening, the truth is that whatever is playing on the surface, this deep silence is still here. And it's in the deep silence that the heart can blossom. The blossoming of the heart is in the ability to receive all that is happening in life. It's so much about just being open receptivity, being the listening, right? True listening is receptivity. It's not grasping outwards with the ears to hear. It's not grasping outwards with sense perception that is really how the sense of the me comes about and divides. It's before sense perception that there is one awareness that is just naturally aware of sense perception, but awareness does not divide ever. So to be the awareness 
is to be the open receptivity that is naturally listening, receiving, like an antenna. That in this moment of presence, that everything you have believed you are is the offering. And to be the offering is to listen, receive, be here as the silence, as the stillness. We could say we come to the point where all that is longed for, all that is desired is God, is freedom, is love, is this truth. And if we open to that as a longing in the heart, if that truly is the only desire that's left, it opens into like a frequency, a vibration of longing. And the frequency of longing is the presence of now. And it can feel like an ache, a pull, a draw, a momentum. It can feel very, very strong. It can bring tears. Now these tears are Gnostic tears. They are, they are God's tears. These are the tears we want to be weeping. Are the tears that weep for the glory that we can open deeply enough into the longing that these tears can fall because these tears are the river that carry us into the remembrance. In a way, these tears are the messenger that say, I'm ready. I'm ready to know who I am. I'm ready to receive the remembrance of purity. So just to flash into the habit to stop tears, to make tears wrong, to hold it all together. Even when those tears well up in moments of being so touched, of tenderness, of beauty, these are the tears we want to weep, right? We're so ready to weep the tears of I'm not getting what I want, but are we willing to weep the tears of a heart that is cracking open? Are we willing to let the tears fall that are the river, the flow? In a way, these tears are the melting of the frostiness and icicles of a heart that is protected. These tears are the melting, the melt water, right? Can we let that melt water flow without making it wrong, trying to hold it all together, trying to be seen a certain way? Can we really just let the tenderness of a heart that is touched, even if it is a heart that is touched, with compassion, with grief, with sadness, whatever it is, can we just allow? Because in a way, all free tears are a segue <laughs> to the, the Gnostic tears, the holy tears. But we're so conditioned to not let those tears fall. These tears are the river, this meltwater of a melting frozenness of heart. They carry us deeper into remembrance of the infinity of heart. As there's a melting, a melting a melting into such an openness, such an unprotected unguardedness. Of course, that can feel confusing, scary, even terrifying to the mind and the me that is so conditioned to protect. But it's all part of the process of being humbled, unraveled, undone, unguarded, 
into the glorious remembrance of who we are in truth. Mm. So life living itself is the means for this humbling. Life living itself is the means. So this open receptivity, this deep listening, being the open awareness, the natural allowing and welcoming of all of life is life welcoming life, naturally surrendering into itself, naturally intelligently refining itself, and in this carrying itself into finer and finer frequencies of remembrance. We could say that what we are in truth is a frequency, <laughs> because what we are in truth is before the sense of mind, body. We could even say, perhaps, before the sense of being. We're before everything. But we can only discover this truth by being this, deepening into this, so that the confirmation is in being this truth. And this is why as we open and we use the means of life and we use the means of teachings and mm, wisdom traditions, we, we, we use the means of the guidance that comes, what brings us alive. But essentially, we, we have to have an autonomy where we keep testing within our own functioning and we have a responsibility within our own functioning to keep refining and refining. Because this truth is a, is a knowing of this truth within the finer and finer frequencies of being. The idea is that there is someone that can give this to you are, are, are low frequency ideas, right? <laughs> the guru culture, it's still a low frequency idea. And what is happening in the dance of consciousness is that we are being invited to attune to finer and finer frequencies that it has played a role, and that role is perfect and beautiful. But we are not supposed to get stuck there, where in a way power is given away. We use that as a means to open to a deeper, subtler, finer frequency of what we are. And we, we go deeper. So it's like, if there's a sense of being drawn to guru, it's to use that as a means and then find guru, the guru light, the love that you are, and meet your guru in guru, <laughs> right? Drop it being my guru. And that idea that can just be a projection and protection and meet guru in guru, in satguru. Meet guru in the truth, in the, in the frequency of oneness, right? Because any true guru is only ever offering that possibility, right? No guru wants disciples in truth. A, a true expression just wants to elevate the resonance, the frequency of love in all beings to bring that remembrance within, an autonomy within, right? <clears throat> and that is what we will see modeled. <laughs> and that is really the clue of, of, of a truth, is that autonomy will always be given to you always be given to you to digest 
and to deepen into the fine frequency of remembrance. And as, as long as there's a wanting to, to give the power away, the power will be given back. The power will be given back to keep finding it, to meet, not in a worldly picture, but to meet in the frequency of Satguru, of love itself, to meet in the remembrance, in the infinite unbounded truth of who you are. So that the, the frequency that you are resonating at is a frequency that is like a trajectory that can refine and refine, that you have the power to refine. You have the power to rebalance and harmonize and to keep opening to subtler and subtler mm, frequencies of remembrance so that wholeness, the remembrance of purity, of the love that is one, is what is unfolding. A truth that is free of tradition, free of lineage, free of the worldly, it's not tangled into the worldly. And yet, of course, there will be expressions and dances of that. But the entanglement is not there. That love wants nothing from you. Nothing from you. Love doesn't even want you to remember yourself as love because love knows that you already are love. So love just loves you. Love just loves you, just as you are. And love continues to love you, just as you are, in openness, in welcoming, so that you can untangle all of the threads that keep a sense of somehow a belief of not being love or loved or lovable. And love will keep loving and shining the light so that this remembrance can get finer and finer and subtler and subtler. The imagining that we are unlovable, that we are unseen, that we are somehow lacking is the core conditioned functioning within the human realm and that keeps us bound within the conditioning of the humanness. So to see through all of the ways that we play it small and we keep ourselves from love It's a process, that's for sure, right? But the glory is that love is always here and you always are this love. And love is always loving. Loving you into the remembrance of the love that you are. Just loving and loving and loving and loving. Being a frequency of love. <laughs> and so you can attune to the frequency of love in order to remember the love that you are. And you can meet love as love in remembrance, in the great glorious remembrance of who you are in truth. There can be so many ways of seeing it, and it is, it is part of the unfolding that, that there are so many unique ways. But the truth is always the same. Mm. The great glory is that there is nothing in the way. The 
The only thing blocking is the mind and the beliefs that there is, are things in the way or obscurations in the way. And we can, we can use this as a protection, this idea that there are things in the way as a protection, of course, as a way of delaying, as a way of keeping the belief in, in some kind of lack or deficiency or unlovableness, a way of keeping that alive. But everything is conspiring to bring us to a remembrance that there is nothing in the way. And wherever it seems like there is something in the way, it is just an opportunity to illuminate. Illuminate as the love, as the presence of love, as the frequency of purity, of divinity, so that the natural purification can happen, the natural humbling can happen, so that we can come to the remembrance of the the true heart that is still, is silent, is infinite, unbounded love. Mm. Love includes everything. Love does not exclude Love is all-encompassing. Love is an openness that is ever open. And to come to the stillness, the silence of this moment, is to come to the openness, the presence of just being, the stillness where you can hear and receive the frequency of the true heart of the love that you are. And this is where, you know, words do not matter. The uniqueness will mean that different words will resonate for different beings. But truth is, of course, before words, even before the holiest of words. And that is why sometimes it is the sounds that make no sense, that can, in, in Sanskrit, can be called the beach sounds, like the seed sounds well, that, that, that don't really have any meaning. Although within our humanness, my goodness, don't we look for meaning even in the beach sounds. We want to know what everything means. But when we actually don't look for meaning and we can recognize sounds that resonate, we can allow those sounds like mantra, true mantra, just sounds that carry us into the finer frequencies without being attached to meaning and understanding. We can open to these very subtle, fine frequencies that don't have a meaning within the denser frequencies of mind. And so they are tools, opportunities to, to open to the finer frequencies for the system to refine in these finer frequencies. Mm.
silence itself is the most profound mantra. And all mantra is leading us to the silence. A deep, unmoving, unchanging silence. A maona. That in the stillness, in the silence, can listen, receive the frequencies that silence has an aliveness. There are fine frequencies here in the silence, receiving the fine frequencies of silence the subtle resonant vibrations of stillness, that here there is an attuning to true essence nature, a finer frequency. Mm. Hear the remembrance in the silence in the stillness, so familiar, the remembrance of your own purity, your own naturalness does not belong to anyone, the truth of who you, you are is an infinity an eternity, the timelessness of this moment, presence itself, fine frequencies, Mm. just being here. Tuning in the silence, receiving, listening, letting the true listening open, receiving, listening, Receiving, listening, just openness, finer frequencies of yourself, that you are subtle, resonant light. In the listening, the remembrance to let the focus be in listening, receiving, receiving it all. You could even say the whole soundscape, not to differentiate, because to receive it all in a way the subtle frequency of silence 
starts to be louder, regardless of what other sounds might be in the soundscape, in the stillness, in the silence, the simple openness of being. To start to feel the, the depth and subtlety of yourself right here. Boom. Deep silent waters. Deep stillness. Silent depths. Hear the remembrance of the essence, nature, unmoving, unchanging, receiving yourself just as you are here now, presence, this moment, this silent moment, perfect presence, perfect love. That you meet in remembrance the unmoving essence nature of who you are, what you are underneath the imaginings of the mind, the beliefs and the stories of the life. But in the silence, in the stillness, the deep peace of just being, just being. The remembrance of the subtle frequency of crystalline light spinning, spinning, spiraling as intelligence, as flows of intelligence opening in the silence to remember that you are made of threads, fibers of spinning light. And in the stillness, in the silence, the remembrance of the frequency of being one with all that is in the light that is resonating in the silence, in the stillness. Just simply being here. Hmm.
Ah. Ah. Mm. Mm. Receiving yourself, receiving the remembrance of your own silence, the simple being, the presence of now, just this. The unmoving, unchanging, wide open, infinite awareness. This whole field, infinite field of intelligence, of light, resonating within itself at the frequency of knowing itself, the frequency of knowing itself brings for you the remembrance of knowing yourself. It is this remembrance as a wide open field and this flow of remembrance, this flow of life. flow of remembrance of the same essence nature of all things mm. flow of life flow of Vishnu Flow of life, flow of Vishnu, flowing, flowing, flowing. Mm. Shiva, Vishnu, Brahma. Sat, Jit, and Hand. Mm. That's resting in the stillness, in the silence, in the presence, a 
aware of the moving changing and yet utterly undisturbed by the moving changing. Recognizing that the stillness, the silence is always free, infinitely, boundlessly free. And you are this freedom. You are this openness. The remembrance here brings the freedom to be yourself. To be free of the constraints of personality and story. And yet for the heart to be so wide in its expression of divinity. Blossoming, the blossoming of love on the surface of life, the blossoming of the remembrance of the love that you are right on the surface of life, fully engaged living, life living itself, flowing within itself, fully engaged with itself, meeting itself, receiving itself, experiencing itself, knowing itself in and as everything, knowing the one, the love, the glory, the purity, divinity of all that is. Mm -hmm. Resting here. Resting here. Receiving yourself. The fine frequency of open receptivity in the stillness, in the silence. The absolute welcoming of all of life, just as it is. There's nothing that can possibly happen that is outside of this truth. Whatever is appearing on the surface of life, however it is being perceived, it is just wanting to return into the remembrance of love. That is all that is longed for everywhere in the heart of every being. However much darkness there might seem to be, there is no darkness in any heart in truth. It can be obscurations that when believed in and invested in, but the play of life is playing itself out to free itself. And the remembrance of this peace that is undisturbable is where this sanctuary of remembrance is to rest in this frequency as an offering to all mankind.
to rest in the peace of remembrance. The remembrance of love, the remembrance of purity, of divinity, of, of what divinity is. A divinity is truth. But we have to have a willingness to open to the finer frequencies and to let go into the subtlety. We have to let go into the flow of life that trusts itself implicitly because it knows that everything that is happening is love. If there seems to be anything else, it is an opportunity to receive and receive and allow whatever needs to be received surface transmuted and brought to openness, brought to the remembrance of love, that we can be these vehicles for the remembrance of love within the human experience for distilling the denser frequencies. Sitting in light, sitting in the light of true nature. Mm. Mm. Here. There is a natural contentedness, a natural happiness, a joy that is causeless. That when we bring all of the attention back to the cause, we realize there is a causeless truth. We open before cause and effect, a play of opposites to the oneness that the only cause is love. Mm.